Welcome to Asian Review. I'm your host, Bill Sharp, coming to you from downtown uh, Honolulu uh, in uh, the greatest state of Hawaii. It's a shame, but uh, Taiwan is often overlooked in academia, media, research centers, etc. The new Washington, D.C.-based uh, Global Taiwan Institute uh, is solely dedicated to researching Taiwan issues. As such, it should raise American and global interest in Taiwan. And joining us today via Skype from Washington, D.C. is the executive director of the Global Taiwan Institute, Russell Xiao. Welcome to Asian Review. It's great to have you with us, Russell. Thank you, Bill. It's great to be here. That's great. That's great. Well, uh, let's get right into it then. Um, the Global Taiwan Institute. Um, how did it get started? Who were the movers and shakers, um, in addition to you, of course? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, this uh, this is the the origins of the Global Taiwan Institute really began um, over a year ago, and while the organization was only established in September of uh, 2016, so we've only been in operations now for about a little over four months. The planning for it really began uh, well over a year, and really, it's really the 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 the, the, the brainchild of many Taiwanese Americans that really looking at how to really establish an institution in Washington, D.C. Uh, to really help uh, raise the visibility of Taiwan policy issues in D.C. And so uh, many uh, motivated and passionate um, Taiwanese Americans, as well as Taiwanese uh, in, uh, in Taiwan and people in Taiwan, uh, donated to uh, establish this organization that you know uh, has now been established and uh, so as the executive director, I, uh, I run its major programs. Uh, we have a very active board. Um, to go back to your question, the board of directors uh, actually includes. Um, well, uh, let's just go back a little bit here. So um, and then we'll get to the board of directors. Um, OK, so basically the, the impetus for the Global Taiwan Institute to get it started what came from Taiwanese Americans and some folks in Taiwan, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, any political parties? No, we're not affiliated with any single political party. Um, and although people do tend to look at our um, people that have associated themselves uh, with this institution as being more uh, green leaning, mm -hmm. I always tell the uh, you know uh, people who are you know concerned by this or uh, by sort of the perceived coloration of the organization that the, really the proof is in the work product that we are producing, and I think we can go at much length in terms of really the uh, 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 about the products that we're producing and how that really is to reflect. Uh, a more objective analysis about current developments related to Taiwan and why they uh, why they are important to the discussion, ongoing discussions about U.S. policy towards Taiwan. Well, uh, so, yeah, that, that's great. And and you, of course, had a uh, extensive background working in research centers. You worked for the Jamestown Foundation. You worked for Project Two Zero Four Nine. Um, and, and you know, a lot of your work was focused on security issues, if I recall correctly. That is correct. Yes, I've worked uh, for four years at the Jamestown Foundation as editor of its uh, China Brief. Mm -hmm. And so that was a publication that was produced bi-weekly where uh, we worked with um, uh, subject matter experts from across the country and across the world, really, uh, to bring together a, a great group of expertise uh, to focus on contemporary developments related to uh, the PRC, um, prostrate military issues. Um, and I was able to bring a lot of that over to uh, to, to, to my work here at uh, the Global Taiwan uh, Institute, and one of our major programs. Um, secondly, also, what, what you, know, that you already mentioned, I was at the Project 2049 Institute as well, an excellent institution that was established by uh, uh, Randy Shriver and Mark Stokes, um, and uh, learned a great deal about you know, really doing deep dive analysis on uh, military security issues. Um, and, and so, you know, really in those uh, in those years that I spent in Washington uh, working for these institutions, it really gave me a, a, a good look, an observation uh, from, you know, what was really missing in the Taiwan piece of analysis and uh, the discussion here. Well, that's great. Uh, now, how do you differentiate yourself from Project 2049? What's, uh, what's the overlap? Where's the differences? Well, really, 
really Project 2049 is an excellent research organization that has its core competency really at the military security uh, research. Um, and there's no uh, sort of replacing or, uh, or, or replacing that type of expertise with the type of uh, research that uh, Mark Stokes and Ian Easton does uh, do over there. And really, but there is such a wider gap of issues that are relate and affect U.S.-Taiwan relations that just isn't getting the coverage uh, in D.C. for either you know financial reasons or for human or for plain human resource reasons. And really, here uh, GTI is there to fill this wide gap of analysis. That's uh, great. That's great. Um, as I said in my opening comments, it, it is, it's unfortunate, but Taiwan is often overlooked uh, in the media, in academia, um, in, in research centers. I know Ty, um, Washington is full of research centers and think tanks, and all of them seem to deal with Taiwan to one degree or the other, but it doesn't seem to be the highest priority. That, that's an excellent point. I, I really want to, uh, you know, sort of elaborate on uh, and expand on that, if I may. And, and that is, you know, I mean, yes, you've noted correctly noted that there are uh, elements of, of Taiwan analysis in uh, several of the uh, of the major programs in Washington D.C. and the larger think tanks. However, there are just oftentimes a, a subset of a larger China program. Mm. And uh, so there, it, but there hasn't been uh, any institution dedicated uh, solely, exclusively to Taiwan policy research. And really, that is where uh, GTI plays its uh, the most important contributing role, uh, in that we provide a space uh, for both analytical research as well as a platform for discussion in terms of the seminars that we organize uh, to consistently provide uh, more visibility to Taiwan policy issues as they relate to uh, other uh, other discussions that are, are, are taking place in, in, in D.C. Did you get any, uh, how should I put this, um, uh, delicately, I hope, um, did you get any hard elbows from some of the other research centers when you were starting out and said, said like, um, why do you guys want to go this way? We already covered this. Um, you know, you'll just duplicate what we're doing, you know, sort of a little fearful of competition, maybe. Uh. You know, I mean, that's an excellent question, and I, and I do get that quite often. And I think, you know, uh, and, and really the answer, and my honest answer here is that no, we, we did not. And I think that's because, you know, really there just hasn't been any or other organization like GTI. Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, for the most part, uh, Taiwan, as it's covered in the major think tanks, are often a subset of a much larger China program. Yeah, that's and I think true. It has, that's really true. And, and so, so in the in the sense that where we are here to provide a sort of a, a complementary role to a lot of the uh, uh, the Taiwan programs that are out there to provide more research and analysis, we're here to also be able to provide serve as a hub for that type of research and providing and also a a a a, a, um, a place where these discussions can maybe had so that experts who do look at Taiwan uh, and ever and other institutions can have. A, uh, a place where we can have these discussions to understand really how Taiwan fits in the broader uh, security environment in, um, in, in the Asia Pacific. You, you put it very well, and, and actually I would say in academia, um, Taiwan is often treated as a subset of uh, a course or something, some area of endeavor about China. Um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's unfortunate because Taiwan has so many great lessons to teach the rest of the world. Right, right, and there's a great reach of uh, a great wealth of uh, history there, and a wealth of other issues that um, that are often over, over, as you have mentioned, overlooked. You know, there's a tendency in Washington D.C. to really tr uh, to only look at Taiwan in sort of four-year cycles uh, when there's a presidential election, where there, when there's an election around the corner, in which case, you know, uh, a lot of analysts or uh, government officials are are, are 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 concerned about you know the political risk of any type of change in power, or when there is a arms package on the horizon. And so, like as I was mentioning earlier, there is uh, in between those four years, in between those arms packages, uh, there's a huge gap of, uh, uh, of information developments that are happening in Taiwan, cross-strait relations, U.S.-Taiwan relations, that just isn't getting enough coverage. And so GTI, with its program, stands poised to really provide, you know, really the channels uh, for the, a, a more sustained uh, understanding about really a dynamic, dynamic society uh, that is ever-changing and also a political dynamics that influences uh, cross-strait relations, which is the traditional uh, sort of lens by which uh, many uh, U.S. policymakers look uh, 
towards Taiwan, whether that is that should be the case, I think we can certainly have a discussion about that, perhaps at another in, in another forum. Do, um, do, no, wait, let me under, make sure I understood your last comment here. Are you saying that so many people only look at Taiwan in terms of cross-strait relations? Yes, yes, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I could not agree with you more. And if I add a little political note, I think this is a problem of the Kuomintang, the KMT, is rightly or wrongly, the perception of the public, I believe, in Taiwan is that the Kuomintang only cares about cross-strait relations. It really doesn't care about anything else. And that's really to its detriment. It, they, um, nationalist Kuomintang party officials tell me, well, they're working on other programs and all that, but if they are, they're not very visible. And um, so it's, it's, your comment is very interesting. Yeah. No, you know, I mean, I think that that is also an extension of the framework of how, you know, uh, U.S.-Taiwan relations was uh, sort of, uh, was, was, uh, was st had started, you know, post-1949 particularly. And, uh, you know, with the, uh, the, 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 the uh, old Kuomintang uh, government at that time with a very, um, you know, uh, assertive trying to uh, retake the mainland, uh, China. Right. And uh, so, therefore, the framework of that relationship had been, at least from the U.S. perspective, you know, um, you know, while trying to deter at least, uh, you know, Chiang Kai-shek from uh, retaking the mainland while also maintaining, uh, you know, a good deal of support and defense relationship with uh, with uh, the KMT in order to ensure that it does not uh, uh, get overtaken by, uh, by the PRC. Right. Well, let me ask you this question. How big is your annual budget? Um, well, we are a growing organization, so we are really looking at trying to expand. Um, so currently, right now, we're looking at an annual budget of around uh, closer to about 500,000, uh, which is, you know, a decent size for the organization where we have five full-time staff, uh, well, four full-time staff members and a part-time staff. And uh, but with all the programs that we have, it's uh, I like to think that we, you know, really pack a uh, we punch above above our weight. Uh, in well, that's organ good. That's good. And you're in a really great area of Washington. You're in, just off DuPont Circle, as I understand. That is correct, yes. We're that's, a great, that's a really good place for a nonprofit research center to be located, I think. Absolutely. We're surrounded by think tanks and, you know, government offices and really, do, you know, they're the target audience of the, the type of people that we want to attract to our events. And so, you know, as I, as I had mentioned earlier, um, you know, we have several programs that we uh, that we have, uh, which includes a public seminar series. Now, we've had eight public seminars uh, so far already, covering a wide range of issues that, you know, uh, ranges from Taiwan policy review, looking at uh, cybersecurity, looking at Taiwan as uh, oh, the that's good. We're, yes. um, we're, we're coming right up on the break here. We've probably got about 30 seconds to break time. Um, and we, as you know, we have one minute break. And um, when we do come back to the break, we want to talk about some of the special programs you have and how you reach out to the public in your, in your publications. And I, I think that will be something that our audience will be really interested in. And um, I suppose if anybody wants to get on your mailing list, they just get online, uh, go to Global um, Taiwan Institute, and sign up. GlobalTaiwan.org. <laughs> OK, GlobalTaiwan.org. OK. Um, well, we're just about on break here, so I, I, don't, I don't know if we want to get into anything substantive right now. But, no but here, we'll go on the break, and we'll come back in about a minute or so. Hello, everybody. My name is Mark Shklov. I'd like you to join me for my program, Law Across the Sea, on thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Aloha, I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. I also have a blog of the same name at kawilucas.com where you can see all of my past shows. Join me this Friday and every Friday at 3 p.m. Aloha.
Welcome back to Asian Review. My guest today is uh, Russell Xiao. Russell is the executive director of the new Global Taiwan Institute, which is located just off of DuPont Circle in Washington, D.C., and seeks to raise a public awareness uh, about Taiwan. Uh, a, a really great uh, step forward, I think, in that Taiwan, unfortunately, given all its successes and how, in my view, so many countries in the world, they could be as well off as Taiwan politically, uh, that is democratically and economically, they'd be quite happy. Uh, unfortunately, Taiwan doesn't get the attention that it should because it's often overshadowed about, by China. Well, um, before the break, um, uh, we were going to get into, and we said we'd hold off until we came back from the break, some of your special programs, how you reach out to the public, some of your publications and that kind of thing. So do you want to tell us about those? Absolutely, Bill. Uh, and I think I just do, um, you know, elaborate some more about, you know, the, really, the mission of uh, GTDI. Sure. And that is, essentially, it's really to enhance U.S.-Taiwan relations. Okay. And the way we do that, you know, and the way we do that is through public uh, policy research, uh, through, you know, organized, uh, pro organizing programming that I'll go to in just a little bit. And so these programs that we have, um, we have currently four major programs. The first major program is a, um, a weekly publication called the Global Taiwan Brief. Now, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the first segment of the show, I was previously the editor of China Brief, and really I saw the value in terms of providing information and analysis. I, I uh, might add for the benefit of our, of our viewing public that might not be familiar with it, that China Brief was a very high quality publication. I, I, I personally benefited from it numerous times. Thank you very much, Bill. That's 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 very uh, very nice of you to say. Thank you. Um, and so and, and so really the model uh, for this global Taiwan brief uh, came from uh, you know the the work that I did over there at Jamestown Foundation, and the idea is to provide uh, information and analysis and and also contextualized uh, analysis about current developments related to Taiwan. Now you know the the scope of the the, the topics that we cover is wide ranging. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, the issues that uh, that we think are relevant to U.S.-Taiwan relations really should extend beyond just, you know, the traditional security issues, while still very important, and the political risk issues that often comes with any type of, uh, you know, sort of elect uh, electoral changes in, in Taiwan. And so through the publication, what we try to do is to expand the crop of writers who look at Taiwan and to also expand the crop of issues. And so every week, we invite uh, three uh, to four contributors contributing authors to contribute short, brief, accessible articles uh, to the publication uh, about some con contemporary developments related to uh, to Taiwan policy issues. And so just most uh, our most recent issue, in fact, uh, was a special issue that included three articles uh, contributed by um, David Wen, who is um, actually one of the architects of uh, Tsai, uh, President Tsai Ing-wen's uh, Asia Silicon Initiative, mm. to include uh, also, Arthur Tu, uh, who is a young entrepreneur who actually helped startups, uh, tech startups in Taiwan, uh, and also the vice president of the U.S. Taiwan Business Council, uh, Lana De Nelson, and uh, she wrote, you know, sort of a, a U.S. business perspective on the Asia Silicon Valley Initiative. And so, you know, this is really trying to provide, uh, we try to provide a forum uh, through Global Taiwan Brief for these, you know, t timely discussions about uh, uh, policy issues that, um, that, 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 you know, that, that are relevant to U.S. and Taiwan. So uh, this is one element of our programs. The second element of our programs um, is a public seminar series. Uh, just before we broke, uh, you know, I mentioned that briefly. And that public seminar series uh, is meant to raise the visibility of Taiwan, really be able to, um, you know, provide a platform for a discussion about contemporary policy issues uh, related to Taiwan. And um, and so we've held eight of these public seminars already. And the, the topics range from the Taiwan Policy Review, where we had uh, Richard Bush, uh, who is um, uh, a very well-known um, Taiwan hand uh, and also China hand, um, uh, who, 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 who serves as the former chairman of the AIT, uh, provide remarks, uh, former deputy director of uh, AIT, uh, David Keegan, as well as the uh, director of the Asian Study Center, Walter Lohman. Um, and, you know, it really just, we're trying to, um, you know, really bring in the expertise to help provide uh, some context to these tiny developments and being able to help inform 
really, uh, you know, current policymakers, the academics, as well as the public at large, about the importance of um, uh, importance of Taiwan and also the nuances of Taiwan policy, which often gets lost in mm. in, in a very uh, in a very sort of uh, in, in, in often debates that we hear here in Washington and oftentimes here in uh, in other uh, sort of mainstream uh, media outlets. And so we continuously try to raise the visibility by raising different issues that are are relevant. So, for instance, as I mentioned earlier, we had a panel on on cybersecurity, and there we brought a cybersecurity expert from the private sector uh, to include uh, my former colleague, uh, Mark Stokes, who also happens to be one of uh, our advisory board member. Now, he was uh, a, a former senior Pentagon official uh, and Air Force lieutenant colonel, uh, now retired. And he's done a great deal of uh, uh, really extensive research on cybersecurity and, and how the uh, the People's Liberation Army is is organized uh, uh, to to wage uh, cyber war and um, and cyber espionage and um, and also to include another former uh, uh, Taiwanese um, naval uh, attaché um, that you know works uh, in. In, uh, in the Tecro office and has good extensive knowledge and and these are expertise that 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 just doesn't that just aren't heard often enough I mean you know releasing a one-time report um, you know often it's buried in a lot of the literature that that gets produced out there about Taiwan and you know and by having these timely events associated with uh, current developments we really get to highlight the the, the importance of uh, you know these uh, literature and and studies. And so that's the second element. We're in the process right now of planning an annual symposium, uh, which is going to be our flagship uh, project uh, or conference. And uh, that's going to be held sometime later this year. Uh, but the idea is, uh, is quite, uh, it's, it's quite simple and straightforward, and that is really to, uh, to establish a baseline for assessing U.S. policy options towards Taiwan and really bringing together the, the supporters for a stronger U.S.-Taiwan relationship who may not necessarily agree on how to, to get there um, to a stronger U.S. relationship and, and really setting up some metrics so that we can continuously and systematically assess uh, really the benchmark of success uh, to assess the, uh, the benchmark so that we know where you know where we are uh, where things work and where things uh, aren't okay working. well uh, let me ask you this okay you're going to do these policy studies you're going to have the symposium the annual symposium so what are you going to do with all this information how are you going to uh, 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 not to sound pejorative but how are you going to peddle it to the policymakers? You know, I mean, that's great. I mean, right now, that's a great question, Bill. I, and I think, you know, that's one, that's a, that's an issue that we're constantly strategizing and thinking about. And, you know, I think right now what we're doing is uh, is within what, uh, within our current strategy is to utilize um, our, our website as one of the main channels for uh, communicating the ideas that we are producing to the to uh, to the outside world, whether that may be uh, you know to um, to the, our audience to the to the audience in, in Washington D.C. Uh, within uh, on the Capitol Hill or in different government agencies, and um, you know and the idea is to get uh, you know our our name out there uh, cited by the you know the think tanks. Um, excited by you know research institutions as as credible analysis uh, which they are and uh, and because what they offer is again you know uh, the global Taiwan brief offers something more than what you know the the mainstream media can provide because it's written by experts who have looked at these these issues who have more of a, a deeper understanding about these issues and hopefully can then provide a more nuanced understanding about these developments for what uh, for what they mean um, and uh, and so so. You know that that's really what we hope that people will do um, in terms of uh, we, you know, going on our website at www.globaltaiwan.org and signing up uh, to receive our newsletter. Uh, we also have uh, our events. Our let, me, all, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, Russell. Uh, who's going to go to the State Department or Capitol Hill and say, "Look, this is what we think U.S. time U.S. policy towards Taiwan should be"? Who's going to be the the chief salesman. Am I looking at him? <laughs> well, you know, I'm always going to be. I'm always. Uh, I'm always uh, selling the organization. That's for sure. You know, I mean, this is. Uh, you know, this is really one of the. You know, uh, uh, this is a, a great organization, a great institution, and really unprecedented. And um, you know, I'm, I'm working with an excellent team of uh, researchers who, um, you know, include um, a good friend and co a, for, um, 
uh, David Ahn, who uh, previously worked for the State Department, um, and, and other individuals like Melissa Newcomb, who uh, worked at other research institutions in Washington, D.C., uh, Annabelle, um, and you know, and we're working with a great team also of international, uh, well, advisory board members who are very well established in the uh, in this field, uh, either in Taiwan studies or Taiwan military security studies. And you know, I named a few earlier, but we have a group of sixteen uh, advisory board members currently, uh, and and uh, and they include some great people such as Gordon Chang, um, who is the noted author on China. Uh, Ralph Kosa, whom uh, you know, as, as as you mentioned earlier, is a, a local of uh, of Hawaii and, uh, right, and right, a, right. a great a great, uh, a great uh, mentor to uh, to many young aspiring Asia Asia hands. And uh, June Tofu Dreyer, uh, Dr. Fell. That's a very well known name. Very well known name. And, yes, and right. David is is and maybe Europe's number one Taiwan expert. Yes, yes, excellent, excellent. He's People done so much, so much work on Taiwan. It, it's just incredible. Yeah. And I personally have never met him, but I'm quite familiar with his work. Oh, good, good, good. And, and then there are others like Shirley Khan, also who, you know, formerly uh, worked at the Congressional Research Service. And she's and, another uh, Hawaii product. Let me chime in on that. <laughs> <laughs> she's been on the show as well, actually. Oh, fantastic! That's great. That's great. And and, and also uh, former um, uh, AIT director uh, Bill Stanton, uh, and who I understand also was was on your show to um, uh, to include former ambassador Stephen Young and AIT director uh, Stephen Young. Uh, others like Arthur Waldron, who uh, whom uh, is one of the, the most prominent academics, uh, you know, working on China and. And, and Taiwan issues, uh, Toshi Yoshihara from the Naval War College. Mm. And so that's just really naming a few, uh, and, and John Tashik, uh, Mark Stokes. Um, we're, we're coming down here to our last two minutes. Um, let's just talk a little bit about future plans. So to focus on that for maybe the last minute and a half or so. Uh, one minute, right, I've, I've, been, really I've been corrected, um, sure. one minute. Okay. So we'll and have so, to ask uh, you, unfortunately, we'll have to ask you to make this brief. <laughs> No worries, no worries. So you know, really the upcoming seminars that we have that are, are most uh, important to know is um, if we have a book talk with uh, Misha Oslin coming up next Monday uh, on his book, The End of the Asian Century. Now this is a very provocative title sounding book, but we want to tease out the Taiwan significance to you know, really the theories that he is, uh, he is putting forward in his new book. We also have an excellent, excellent panel coming up on uh, February 15th on President Trump's Taiwan policy. And so there we'll have uh, 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 Ambassador Stephen Young come down to give the opening remarks to include comments by Gordon Chang, Harry Kazianas. Uh, and our very own uh, David Ahn. And, you know, we're really going to continue the momentum in trying to... Russell, to Russell, I, I don't want to cut you off, but it looks like the clock, which is always unfriendly to us, has become unfriendly again. <laughs> so um, it looks like our time is up. And uh, I want to thank Russell for joining us today from Washington, D.C., where it is 10.30 at night, so we really appreciate that. And uh, his great oh. introduction to the Global Taiwan Institute. I, I'm sure we all appreciate it, and we're, we're glad to know about it. Uh, I also want to thank you uh, for joining us, and I encourage you to join us again next week, February 13th, at 5 p.m., when my guest will be Robert Landell, who is the executive director of the Hawaii Association for Independent Schools. He is working on a really special project to help further internationalize education in Hawaii, especially at Hawaii's prestigious Iolani School. So uh, we'll see you then. Thank you for joining us.